So today's lesson is inspired by one of our longtime UICollective.co community members, Joe, who had a question around radio button toggling, where selecting one radio button will deselect another. Uh, so first off, excuse my auto layout and the fact that the radio buttons are the same color. Uh, we're just going to be focusing on uh, the variable logic today and getting this set up. Um, so again, a great lesson, a very real world, realistic scenario. Um, and one thing I would like to highlight is we do have some awesome new courses coming up on uicollective.co. Apologies for the delay at re releasing a video on YouTube. Been busy working on these, such as our introduction design systems, implementing design systems, design systems for business rules, and much, much more. Um, so with that said, let's dive into the lesson. All right, so I've just got a really simple, basic UI here. Uh, for something like a settings page, I have two radio buttons. So one is my uh, active state, and the other is my inactive state. So you have the option to choose between active or inactive. Now, pay really close attention to this, because these values right here are what we're going to be using uh, to build our prototyping functionality or logic. Actually, logic's probably the wrong term because we're not going to be using conditional logic, but more so just the logic of our prototype and how to get it the way that to work the way that we want. So let's go ahead and get started here. So let's look at, open up our local variables and let's create a couple of variables. However, before we do that, that one thing I'd like to note is if I click into uh, our component on screen. I see my um, my state, but I don't have the option to actually assign a variable to it. Now, it's a little bit of a weird bug, something different. I'm not too sure Figma's thought and logic there and not being able to apply uh, or connect different components, symbols uh, to individual variables. Uh, at least when they're inside a frame, I found that a little bit strange. What you actually have to do and what we're going to do today is actually work with uh, components that are outside of the individual uh, frame itself, and then just paste them in uh, later on. So it's a little bit of a unique Figma trick for you if you can't get something up and running. So here, I now have the option to attribute uh, the variable. Whereas if with the component inside the frame, that's currently not an option. So just something uh, to make note of. So here we have our active uh, radio button and our inactive uh, radio button. So let's open up our local variables and let's create two uh, string variables. Let's create a string, and we're gonna create two different string variables today. One for our uh, starting active radio button, and another for our starting inactive radio button. So let's create a string variable for our starting active. And of course, because it's starting active, we want our string value to match that of uh, the state variant value in this case, active. And the second option that this could be, so if I was to select this radio button, this would then become deselected. So that will be our inactive, just like that. And let's then go ahead and create another string variable. Actually, before we do that, let's, uh, let's assign. So we have our starting active. Let's assign starting active to the symbol. And I can see that because we have uh, active as a mode and active is one of our state uh, variants, I can see that Figma draws the connection. If I was to change this to active one, look what happens. There's a downstream break, break because the variable value doesn't map to a specific variant. So let's change that back to one. There we go. And then let's create another, oops, not another mode, excuse me. Let's create another uh, string variable so starting inactive this time so the same type of um oops inactive Let's keep it consistent um so the same type of uh methodology here because it's starting inactive this one is it will our first mode will be inactive and we have the option to change it to active there we go so now let's go ahead and assign that to uh, inactive there we go. So now that we have uh, our variables set up uh, and applied to our specific symbols of our, comp of our components um, for our radio button, uh, next let's look at actually setting up the prototype itself. So now that we have um, our variables all set up, let's go ahead and start adding the prototyping logic that's gonna allow us to toggle on and off our radio buttons and connect the two so that when one is turned on, the other is turned off or active and inactive. 
So let's start off with our inactive. So there's two things that we're going to need to do here. I'm just going to move this down a little bit just to give it some breathing room. So what we want to have happen is that when this radio button is clicked, our active radio button is going to uh, become inactive and our inactive radio button is going to become active. So let's go ahead and click in. So let's add an interaction that states that on click, we're going to set the variable, scroll all the way down, our starting active. So this radio button right here, and we're going to set that to inactive. Oops, inactive. There we go. So what I just did is I set our starting variable. Let me go to our local variables here. So our starting active, where it's currently at the active mode, we're setting it to inactive. Now there are a couple of different ways that you can do this, um, all following a similar format. Um, so if you have another way to do it, feel free to leave that in the description below. Um, I'm sure there's a more efficient way to do things. Um, designers always seem to find a way, um, but this is just the way that I'm gonna show uh, today. So we just set this to inactive. And another thing that we want to do, oops, let me click in here, is set our inactive to active. So let's set the variable, let me scroll up here. Sorry, that was just hidden at the bottom. Set the variable, oops, let's try that one more time. Let's set the variable inactive. So our starting inactive, which again is this one, and we're gonna set that to active. There we go. And let me just add a quick frame. Um, again, usually it doesn't work if it's nested too, too, uh, too deep in. So let me just paste this inside the frame. And let's maybe just do uh, a lightning quick uh, preview here. Quick preview. There we go. And I can see that that adjusts. And the only reason why the color changed is just because uh, I had altered the color of our original radio button. Uh, so it's something I'll just have to go back uh, and manually fix later on. So now that we see that that's working, let's do the same um, for our active. So let's add an interaction that states that when on click, our radio status on, set the variable. So our radio status starting active becomes uh, active. There we go. And again, add another set variable that sets our radio status inactive to inactive. Active. There we go. So essentially, again, what this is saying is that when this is clicked, it's going to become active. And um, when our starting inactive is click, clicked, this is going to become uh, inactive. So let's... Uh, Again, let's preview the functionality here. So nice toggle, nice toggle, beautiful. Just like that. Loving the way uh, that that looks. So let me go ahead and uh, just paste this in here. And again, the only reason why the color is different is just because I altered the color um, and I didn't set the variable properly. So uh, if you've set up your design system, um, again, let me just quick do a quick preview of that. Oops, of this frame. So again, the only reason why this is just a different color is just some of the, the changes that I made and I didn't set the variable properly. But if you're working within a design system uh, with a standard set of colors, you won't have this issue. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. So now I'm going to go ahead and just paste this in. And our auto layout's all off here. So let me just clean that up. That's fine for now. I won't fix it right here. So now when I present it, I can see that that toggles very nicely. And there you have it. That's how you create an interactive prototype to swap between states. Hey everyone, and this is just your friendly reminder to sign up for uicollective.co. You can join our Slack community, which is totally free to converse with myself or Mike directly, chat with other designers about design systems, so on and so forth. We also offer design system support, our own custom design system and design system training as well, which is perfect for enterprises, freelancers, uh, whoever is interested in learning to build components, master auto layout, or just learn the basics of a design system. And of course, uh, our design system looks like this, where you get access to all these amazing components across both light mode and dark mode. However, this is a paid template. 
Hope to see you on our Slack channel. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. See you soon.